And see, and, and no matter what you say, you taste that tobacco, right? And no matter what they say, you taste the tobacco. And some tobacco tastes better than others. A Nicaraguan tobacco, uh, an Italian tobacco. Um, it's depending on the region where they grow the tobacco. Colombian tobacco, a Cuban tobacco. Huh? What's the price that Absolutely. Well, based on the region. Okay. So based on the taste of the tobacco is you know what you're getting. So you paying that price to get that taste. And she's where did you find that? That's a fuzzy. I mean a jeer. No, no, I don't want it. Tell him no, I don't want it. I can't mix the two. Oh, explain the, the correlation between a cognac, a good cognac, and a good cigar. They asked me that. Um, a cognac, both together, depending on the type of tobacco, they enhance the flavor of each other. They actually complement. And I'm going to try to get you a good understanding of what I mean by complement. I'm going to hold off because I've got this. This is heavy. So when we talk about a cognac, a, li a liquor, or a, a cognac, this is the same with cognac, or... Let me see how I can match it. Uh, imagine like um, steak and eggs. Mm. How one thing complements the other. Uh, uh, syrup on your pancakes. Um, it's good alone, but together. And so what happens is some of the liquors have flavor. A vanilla flavor. Undertone. And they have the undertone of the vanilla flavor in it. They have an undertone of... Uh, whatever was made for that particular cognac. And so what happens is the flavor of the cognac, the flavor of the tobacco come together and give what you call a smoke gasm. Right. I caught that on the way. Smoke gasm. <laughs> In yeah. your mouth. <laughs> I mean, if you are truly a cigar connoisseur, you look for the smoke gasm. Oh, yeah. Right? A smoke gasm is when you have a perfect cigar a perfect tobacco and a perfect cognac, perfectly aged, and you're talking about a symphony in your mouth. I wish Grand Crew is nice. I wish Alex Bridwell. Come on, I got Alex. Was was it? Were you? Did you start smoking with me first? Did you start smoking with me first? I don't know. I don't remember, but I don't know. But. If he said Grand Crew number two, he know he's talking about that Davidoff. And they know I'll be smoking him. Yeah, my uh, Shifu, retired military vet, he put me on. Yes, my Shifu put me on too. I really would like to get more African-American males into cigar smoking because it's more of a, um, it's more of an experience. It's more of a cultured experience. Yeah, I got Alice hooked. <laughs> he said, yeah, you got me hooked. Grand Crew number two, baby. When I first started, I, I wasn't as astute. And I've been, I'm one of those people I don't like to be out of the know. So oh I've been God. studying this guy named Kirby Allison. Okay. And uh, he's the one that really got me into flavored cigars, understanding. And then I started going and doing deep study, deep journey on how to get this. But the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to something, most big contracts are done over cigar. Hmm. In the process of y'all flowing. Or talked about. Mm -hmm. The negotiation is done over a cigar. Mm -hmm. Now, this is what they don't tell you, and I'm going to tell you this. You do know a cigar gets you high. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. This tobacco will raise you to another level. You will bomb the fuck out. I seen it. <laughs> right? And so when you're smoking a cigar, you got to be careful, bro, because this will be a high you ain't had before. Yeah. Yeah, they know we eat high. Yeah, you're gonna be woozy. <laughs> but let me say this, when smoking a cigar, uh, I would really like to get a lot of my brothers doing it because even though people who don't smoke marijuana, you still get high from a cigar. They can say what they want, you still get high. Yeah. And while you're high at that ecstatic state, you're still negotiating and discussing a contract. Mm -hmm. So When I see people um, out and now are becoming a part of the cigar culture, 
I get excited because I know that we're experiencing something that's going to bring us to another level, uh, another level in our negotiations, another level in our networks. Because the conversation with the people who smoke cigars opens up the conversation for you to find out what they do. It was what you should be doing anyway. I start finding out that what rich people do is they find things that other rich people do so they'll have a commonality so that they can start conversing. The overall objective is when you're rich, you want to have commonality because commonality opens up the conversation for conversing. Now I can see what you do, you can see what I do. What most people don't understand is, is that cigar smoking or things like this are really network marketing tools to allow you to open up a conversational piece with somebody else without being so intrusive in what they do. You get what I'm saying? So if a person is smoking a cigar, you can get to that person and be like, hey man, how are you doing? What is that cigar you're smoking? What flavor is that? And then from that one dialogue, what do you do? I've met so many bankers. I mean, I've met a lot of bankers just because I smoke cigar. A lot of the financial advice I get, a lot of things I know that's gonna happen in the market, happens over a Davidoff cigar at a smoke lounge with people who are financiers. And so most people who don't understand the reason why I'm able to do what I do is because I network. And most people are uncomfortable with it. But this cigar, and that's why I want to educate people on the process, this cigar is that ability to converse with people that you normally wouldn't converse with. And you know what I found out? Many of the men that I converse with that smoke cigars are the other culture. I didn't, I didn't know about cognacs. I didn't know about alcohol with it. I didn't know that 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 even getting a good cognac. I'm talking about paying that 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 high ass top dollar for it, or 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 what that would do. You know. So if you're going and you're talking to somebody and you can just have a a discussion about what you're drinking, you know, you'll find out that they may even know the owner of the liqueur you're drinking. Which happened to me once before. Like right, talking about the wine, like you taste the wine, tasting with the food and all that. Yeah, you know, man. Stand wine, but I've been sipping my wine lately. You know what I'm saying? Why? Let me get a little Merlot with my what? uh, being a real filet mignon. Oh, come on. Creme de la creme. Come the on. Risotto on, on the side. Come on, let's talk about it. See that? The risotto, <laughs> baby. The risotto. <laughs> but but that's what we talk about. It's like I want if a black person comes around me, I want them to have an experience. <laughs> It's like, bro, we're not in this just to play dominoes. Hmm. Or spades. Or spades, bro. Let's let's get in the game. Let's get involved with real commerce. Let's get in the game. Well, well that game has rules. Hmm. Some of the rules are chess. Some of the rules are cigars. You understand? I don't know if you said that about your bike. Right. My bike was a part of the game. I bought a Trek Madone. Somebody's like, what? He bought a Madone? Yes. <laughs> I bought a Trek Madone. Well, why, do I, why did I buy a Trek Madone? Conversation. Conversation piece. I didn't buy the entry level, even though I did start out with the entry level bike, but when I became a bike enthusiast, I went and paid that 10000 Then I really know. <laughs> $10,000 for that bike. But why did I buy the bike? The bike wasn't just to buy the bike. You go. For those that need to know, no. <laughs> because when I rode the bike down the street, I bet. this man said, hey, hey, <laughs> nice bike. I stopped. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped. I had a conversation with him. He was an avid bike rider. Hmm. Guess where he lives? Right there off the, one of the richest districts right here in Houston. Hmm. He recognized my Madone just by me riding by. Hmm. I bet. Because he's, he's into it. The Rolls Royce of Because he's into it. Because he's into it. And so I'm teaching people here, if you want to take your life, your business to the next level, start finding the hobbies of the rich and get involved. Mm -hmm. Golf. Why do I have a golf course on my balcony? <laughs> master your putting. Master my putting. Why do I want to master my putting? So when you got on the golf course handling some business. Bro, on the golf course handling my business. Now looking crazy. You don't look like Happy crazy. Gilmore. I, I don't look like Happy Gilmore out there. <laughs> Come here, bro. Give me some, Dun Dun. That's my bro. I don't want to look like Happy Gilmore out there. You know, I, 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 my, I, I built a golf course on my balcony. Most people are like, why did you build a golf course on your balcony? Bro, it's networking. I'm, I'm not out there swinging that putter just to be swinging the putter. I'm out there swinging the putter thinking about who's going to give me a deal on the next 
the next uh, trip we take. All hold number nine on the back stretch. Oh, God. Mm. Go for Eagle or Park. I'll go for Eagle. Birdie. Birdie. I definitely don't want Park. I'm going to have to win with, with Birdies. Hopefully, I'll give you a couple of Eagles. Get a Park if you're trying to let him win. No, I don't want to. Yeah, no, no, hey, no, no, no. some business. I'm going to tell you. you got to let the no, guy win. I'm going I'm I'm to tell you this. Never, I'm going to agree with you. Never outshine the master. Mm -hmm. I will miss that hole to get that contract. I'm not going to show you up right here. Yeah, no. <laughs> Knowing I can hold him on you right here, but I ain't going to beat you out here. No. <laughs> That's 40 laws of power. Law yeah. number one. Outside the mouse. Never what? Outside the mouse. And that's what so many people forget. That's why uh, their lives are on hold, is because you cannot shine the master. But hopefully the master recognizes your ability. Mm -hmm. But how can he recognize us if y'all don't have like interests? So I tell people, I don't, I don't do golf. I know you don't. I know. It's I know not, you not don't. for everyone. I know. I don't do golf. Okay, so you don't do golf. So what do you do that the rich do so you can enter in a conversation so that the rich can find out what you do so they can finance you? See, I'm not out there to play golf. I'm out there to get finance. Mm. Oh, I, that was good. I said that on Facebook or Instagram, right? I'm, I'm not smoking cigars just to smoke them. This ain't good for my lungs. Oh, you, you feel that, right? This cigar ain't good for my lungs, but that contract is. So then they'll say, okay, what you gonna give up for the contract? Well, I don't smoke cigars, but you drink Coke soda water. <laughs> so, so you being fat definitely ain't gonna get you the deal. So I'd rather have a little tobacco smoke on me. You know what I'm saying? It's like you choose your vice, uh, but at the same time, you choose your negotiation too. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. How about just talking about my ass? What they saying on Instagram? Uh, mark my words, I'm gonna send you a really good cognac. Oh, that's my boy. Oh, look, Blue! My boy, Blue! My birthday, April the 12th. No, but, but seriously, the reason why I want to get people involved in this, man, you, you look at, not, I'm talking about not just cigar smoke, but networking. And that was the overall, what I wanted this to be about. I, I'm not trying to get people to smoke cigars. I'm just trying to get people to network. You get what I'm saying? I'm not trying to get people to smoke weed. I'm just trying to get them to network. I'm not trying to get people to drink alcohol. I'm just trying to get them to network. Right? I'm not trying to get people to play golf. I'm trying to get people to network. I'm just trying to get people out of their shells so that somebody can find out what they do so they can stop being poor. The only reason why somebody's listening to me right now and they're poor, they're poor because no rich person has saw their talent. Come on, George Foreman. How are you going to take a grill and get rich? You mean to tell me nobody else looking at me can make a grill? I'm serious. Are you trying to tell me all the black people in the world, he the only one that can get a grill? We don't get the same financing opportunities because we don't have the network with the finances to get the opportunity. Now, when you start talking about, um, all right, I'm gonna say something. If racism exists, it only occurs in the network you're in. Hmm. Catch that one. Think about what I said, and I'm gonna repeat that shit. Mm -hmm. You know what? There ain't no racism in certain countries. In other words, ain't no racism in China. They all Chinese. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, right? Mm -hmm. So racism is a environmental thing. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah, most definitely. And we are in Texas. And I am in a, uh, <laughs> a what color state? Well, red, I'm talking about been red. I'm in a big red state, baby. <laughs> so, so, the then, so then even in the times of racism, didn't racism occur more in the South than the North? Yeah. Are you right? Yeah. So racism occurred in the environment. So there's more racism in more environments than others, right? Yeah. So then up North, wasn't a lot of racism. That's how niggas was going up North. Right? Down south, you know what's down south. You go down there, you're getting your ass cut up. Especially at the uh, the candy plantation. Candyland? Candyland. But seriously, the, the overall objective is, that's what I tell people. I only believe in racism in, in certain areas. 
and I only believe in dominant racism in certain areas. But I don't believe that racism doesn't exist. I believe that it does. Now, what does it have to do with cigar smoking? What does it have to do with, with everything? And I'll give it to you. Because racism exists, people are less likely to share their ideas in the United States because their ideas may come out public in the council culture. So most people don't want to say what they think or how they feel in a racist society. And so you don't know who you're dealing with unless you have, watch this now, a way to involve yourself within their network to know who you're dealing with. Would you agree with me? And so things like cigars allow you to intrude networks so you can know who you're dealing with because in that moment, you can tell through that conversation what type of bastard you're dealing with or what type of blessing you're about to get. But you would know that if you couldn't go on their territory to actually know what you're dealing with and they're going to let you in their territory if you don't play their game. And then the time it takes to smoke that cigar. That's the, the time, time it takes to smoke a cigar, you would know the motherfucker you're dealing with. Did you catch it? Yeah. By the end of this cigar, I will know if I want to do business with you or anything else because by the end of the cigar, I felt your temperament, I felt your energy. Same to God. By the end of nine holes, <laughs> I know if I want to fuck with you. You see why they play golf? Mm -hmm. Come on, I'm trying to show you that there are things that you think they're out there playing nine holes, they're out there feeling your energy. Yeah. They ain't playing no nine holes, they ain't smoking no cigar, just smoke cigar, they're trying to see if they want to fuck with you. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. So if it's cigar smoking, if it's at the horse track, if it's at the race track, Wherever they invite you at, where they like to spend money, that's where you find the rich, mm. where they like to spend money. And they spend money in the most obscure places, like rare wines, fine cigars. You get what I'm saying? Old watches. There are men who collect watches. Rare meats. Rare meats. Okay, you know what? You know what? I wish blacks would get into so bad. We just got out of it. Cattle. Cattle. Angus. Man, if blacks got back into cattle, mm -hmm. if we get blacks back mm -hmm. into beef, it start with a B. You think they can catch that? Mm -hmm. Right? If you got blacks mm -hmm. into beef, instead of eating a goddamn cow, if I got blacks into chicken, oh, we should be. No, I'm not, like, okay, I'm going to ask you a question. Why don't blacks own a chicken farm? The what? Fuck the work. What we eat. I know, but, but the work. No, it's not the work. I guarantee you, if you had a black and you could show them the money. Hmm. The only reason blacks don't do it, they don't see the money. Right. It ain't the hard work. Yeah. There's some hard working ass black motherfuckers out there. Yeah. But they don't see the money. You actually have to sit the black down and say, you buy this one cow. And I don't want to say like the work, right? I know what you mean. I mean like it's not it's not cool. It ain't cool to do it. Until I mean, you go to so Waco, weird. Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you see them driving them King Ranches. Yeah, without a doubt. You feel what I'm saying? Without pulling up on black people. Bank. No, I'm gonna say something about black people, which is why I don't I really want to help my people. Black people like cool money. Mm -hmm. That's what I don't have none. Mm -hmm. No, I want you to hear me. Well, Lotto yeah. money. That's what I have none. They like billboard money. Mm -hmm. Right? They will drive by that billboard and get all their family together and buy all them tickets. Them same people won't get all their family together to buy a piece of property. Oh. Right? So that's what I'm with us. It ain't. It ain't. Yeah. But if, but if you show, I'm honest, I believe this. If you show a black man the work. You gotta open them books up and say, hey, this is my bottom line for last year. Well, I'm sitting young black men down. I'm like, all right, bro, how much money you made last year? What was it in? How much you made last year before that? I said, nigga, in two years you can see an increase? Quantum, anybody that's not multiplying their money quantum, I'm not talking about in Forex, man. Hmm. It's my period. Leveraging other people's money? Hmm. Shit, the pastor do it every goddamn Sunday. Anybody that's not leveraging all the money they're getting from people, or anybody that don't know how to leverage money, wasting people's time. Hmm. It's like, bro, if you get 500 a week right now, which is 2,000 a month, and next year you're in that 4,000 a month, I mean, you just, you fucking out time. There's no way you can shoot, you should be at 2,000 a month with as many opportunities as the present right now, and you still at 2,000 a month after a year. That means your network ain't shit. That means you need a cigar. <laughs> you get it? 
If your money is still the same after a year, nigga, you need a cigar. You need a cigar and be around some people that's talking about how you can multiply the shit you got. Because why are you sitting around the people that's smoking weed? They buying an OZ, but they ain't investing in no cannabis. Those are the things we're saying. I'm like, nigga, if you finna smoke that weed, can we buy a farm, nigga? Like, can we really buy a farm? There's a whole bunch of property around this motherfucker. We could get enough of that money and buy a farm. Well, we can't grow weed. Well, we can grow corn. Mm -hmm. oh, we can't grow corn. We can, we can buy some cows. We can make our own beef. But nigga won't smoke a cigar to find out how niggas make his own beef. Because that ain't cool money. You don't make a bunch of deductions for having animals and stuff? Oh, no, I'm gonna tell you this. If a Negro would go get some property and put a cow on it, just go get a go get two cows. Just the tax deduction on two motherfucking cows. Niggas leave out the city if they knew how to make money. You would have a Negro in the city. They have in the country. Huh? Negroes be in the country, <laughs> driving a King Ranch back to the city. Mm -hmm. And they make enough money the helicopter fly them back. Mm -hmm. But we don't know where the money is. I'm gonna give you one thing. I'm gonna be done with this while you cut me up. The most money in the world, you know where it is? Agriculture. Yep. Yeah. And yet niggas don't talk about it. And I'm talking about Latino niggas, black niggas, they all niggas are me. Anybody that's owned is a nigga. And we gotta get out of niggerdom and into kingdom. And the only way we get into kingdom is by owning shit. We don't own it because we're not even in agriculture. We don't plant our own crops. We don't raise our own food. We don't make shit. We go to H-E-B. Mm. Niggas could have an H-E-B by now. We have enough chicken, enough beef, enough cattle. We have our own H-E-B right now. Our own produce. We're on our own vegetables. We have, we'd have black kids into farming, but black kids don't think farming is cool because they don't see the money in farming. We need black kids into farming, agriculture. Understanding corn, nigga. Corn is the world. And but people don't understand that shit. So niggas like me that's talking shit like this, you don't hear from us because we won't talk. We just make all the money and won't say shit. You see it? So who comes back and tell us how to play the game when we don't even know the, where the roads is? So all the things I was talking about with cigars and cognac and golf, or, or here's another one, fishing. You'd be surprised how many people love sports fishing. Going out and catching a marlin? Do you understand that's a, how many hour trip that is? You got to ride on a boat just to get out there? What do you think they're doing on that boat riding out there to catch that marlin? Come uh, safe. Yeah, I'm business. That long ride out there? Feel, oh, feeling well, what information do you think they're sharing with each other about the market? Everything. It ain't that we can't participate, guys. You just not in the right crowd. That makes sense? All right, man, I talked to y'all now. I shared love on Facebook. I ain't gonna share that, say that live. Put that on there. But, I mean Instagram. But my point of it is, so you get it. Cause I'm sharing some deep ass shit. That's why I said I get in the booth and I can go. But that's the knowledge I wanna get to my people. Yeah. Like. All right, I need somebody to coagulate my thoughts. Because we, these are these are the codes that I learned from the whites. And I'm, I'm serious, white men taught me these codes. And they said, if you wanna know, I was like, what? Smoke a cigar. The fuck? Man, that's dangerous. I don't wanna put that tobacco in me. And then I was cultured. So now I smoke a cigarette, sit off. Uh, I smoke. Now I smoke for research. Why would I smoke for research? I don't know what I'm talking about. Buying a fishy on our magazine. I read it online. I just start reading online. How much more can I learn? What can I learn? How can I learn more so they can talk to me and tell me more of their secrets? You feel me?